and welcome back to the Give and Go. Man, what a set of matches here. Good I'm here Lord. with my co-host, Saltero. What's up, boys? Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe so we get more viewers in here so we can get the chat going. But already, I'm reading your comments, and I agree with you guys. What a banger of a match here. Game of the season, potentially a strong nominee with a 3-3 finish for the Real Madrid versus Manchester City matchup. But then also, over at the Emirates Stadium, yeah. Arsenal joined against Bayern Munich as well. 10 goals combined between these two matches with these four amazing clubs going at it, man. Instant reaction. How are you feeling after this game? I mean, I think Jamie Carragher said right after the match, this was the highest goal scoring quarterfinal day in Champions League since like 15 years. Really? It's been a long time since this many goals were scored. And that's the wow. thing, bro. At the Bernabeu, at the Emirates Stadium, it was a goal yeah. fest. A feast for the eyes Let's start in there. front of goal, bro. But I do want to start at the Santiago Bernabeu where we had Real Madrid host the UEFA Champions League holders Manchester City. Mm -hmm. Obviously going into this, I was thinking and hoping Manchester City would come out on top over the course of both legs. Dude, I don't even know where to start. No, I'm I don't know pretty either, speechless. No. I mean, already in the chat, I've seen it. Worldies. Pretty much every single goal that was scored was just an absolute banger, a cracker, a rocket, whatever <laughs> adjective you want to apply to it. You absolutely can. Yeah. But I think I'm. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start with Real Madrid here, All right. because I think the conclusion that I got at the end of this game is they probably could have gotten more out of this game. All things considered. I think Madrid did a little bit more in that first half to really get themselves above Manchester City, not just on the scoreboard, but also in just the passage of play, bro. And going into the second half, I honestly thought Madrid were going to hold on. Because if you think about it, if Foden and Guardiola don't pull those two bangers out of their asses, Manchester City don't get a result here, bro. And for Madrid, I know they got lucky on that one deflection goal, but the other goals were really, really good mm -hmm. for them. And I think at the end of the day, this is a good result for Real Madrid, considering that they are playing the holders in Manchester City. But I think they could have done just a little bit more to actually get the win here. And th that's why I think this is an amazing result for Manchester City, yeah. all things considered. Because yeah. once Ernesto Valverde tied the match, I mean, you saw the Real Madrid fans celebrating, but they were celebrating like they were winning, man. And I was like, I was like, maybe hold off on that a little bit because. Because Manchester City just got a 3-3 tie at the Bernabeu where they led 3-2 at one point with John Stones on one goddamn leg, bro. Yeah, dude, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> crazy, crazy happenings there. But then also with Vinny Jr., I mean, attacking that wing constantly and ultimately, you know, the lack of Kyle Walker showing itself, man. Like, that was a huge absence that they had. And then also Nathan Ake missing on this game. And then the biggest one, Kevin De Bruyne not playing a single minute in this match, man. Like, you told me these things before going into this game that they wouldn't have Kyle Walker, yes. Nathan Ake, Kevin De Bruyne, that John Stones be hindered half the, half the freaking match. I would have told you, damn, then Real Madrid probably has a good chance of winning it. They get a 3-3 tie now going back to the uh, Etihad Stadium with the hopes of maybe getting these, backs, these players back in time to be healthy for the match. So I think it's set up big time for Manchester City to take advantage in the next game yes. and so therefore I think this is a better result for Manchester City because I agree Real Madrid ultimately has to leave the Bernabeu with a tie yeah exactly the game will completely reset there's no away goals it's basically 0-0 except that it will be decided in Manchester but I want to go back to the point that you made the absence of Nathan Ake and Kyle Walker man because I think their absences were completely shown in the first 20, 25 minutes because pretty much every play was get the ball out wide to Vinicius Jr. or Valverde if he could on the other side. And the overload of Vinicius and Rodrigo was phenomenal. Yeah, they look so good. Manchester City they look so good. could not contain them for the first 45 minutes. That's why I say that at the end of the day, Madrid could have gotten more because the amount of times that they stretched Manchester City and actually broke in behind the last line of defense was way too many times for them to not get more goals. And again, conceding the goals that they did, there's nothing they, they can really do. So I think Madrid are both a little unlucky here, but also they should have utilized Vinicius and Rodrigo a little bit more because, dude, John Stones, Akanji, uh, the entire back line, Ruben Diaz, they could not figure it out for like a good 15, 20 minutes. Finally, the game settled after 30 minutes into the match, but it was all Madrid, I think, for the first 25, 30 minutes. 
Uh, even though it was Manchester City with a cheeky goal no. from Bernardo Silva, no. who actually took the lead. That's what I think made this game crazy because at times, this was like an NBA game where the defenses were really good, but when the offense showed up, there's nothing you could do. Yeah. Absolutely nothing Dude, you quality, could do. Bro. The quality, bro. The quality was, was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. ridiculous. And I think that's what we got feasted to a 3-3 butte of a game. Yeah, that's why I'm so hyped, man. All three Manchester City goals coming from outside the box. Yeah, unreal, dude. Yeah. Unreal. Let's look at the comments here, but before I do that, actually, let's do a poll. I would like to do a poll where we find out what you guys think. Who will win the next matchup between Real Madrid and Manchester City? Will it be Manchester City at home at the Etihad, or will it be Real Madrid pulling off a result? Manchester City versus Real Madrid. Comment on the poll or submit a vote on the poll that producer Rudd is making right now. And now I'm going to read your comments. Let's see what you guys are saying. Rodolfo Chavez saying, Can't believe Rodrigo got benched before Vinny. He was everywhere this game. Vanquisher says, If Manchester City, one moment, it's loading on screen. Vanquisher says, If Manchester City managed to get a draw at the Bernabeu despite these energy injuries, then I'm pretty fearful that they will overpower Real Madrid at the Etihad. That's how I feel. Exactly. That's how I feel. Yeah. CPAP says, Saltero ignoring Real reality of two lucky deflections yeah i mean the first one's complete luck complete oh, yeah. luck for madrid the second one though was so blatant in how he burned a kanji burned him bro. that he completely burned him. Akanji could not catch up and there was zero coverage from the rest of manchester city center backs because they were pushed so far up it was basically one-on-one -on -one. rodrigo gets a little lucky with the deflection but the way that he burned the manchester city defense with a run i i don't really consider that lucky uh, it's just that it's that real madrid avalanche man when yeah. they get going like that those two back-to-back -back goals it was scary man it really was Foden's goal. Oh, man, absolute class. You're Foden, dude, I had to stand ridiculous. up. I lost my fucking mind because you guys, if you watch this podcast, know how high I am on Foden this year. He's having an amazing season yeah. so far. Yeah. To see him step up when they're down 2-1, essentially doing what Kevin De Bruyne did last year when he tied the game up for Manchester City away from home. Man, what a beautiful, beautiful goal, man. I was so proud of my boy, Phil Foden. Eddie Fifi says, for a game like that, I missed the away goal advantage in the UCL. I don't. I don't at all no. because... Uh, again, there's there's luck. There was definitely luck in this match. If you have the away goal rule in here, then it kind of it, it makes it tough for the uh, for the team like Madrid having to go on the road of the next game and deal with three away goals. I think that'd be really harsh. I love that it's just reset. Now you just go to Manchester City. It's nil nil. The winner will go on. Yeah. I love that. There's nothing weird. There's no weird mathematics you have to do. Yeah, the the, the poll results are basically in 65% towards Manchester City, 35 towards Real Madrid. I mean, that's how I feel about the odds of them pulling yeah. off a result. And then I see someone commenting here, uh, Roger Rivera, imagine adding Mbappe to the Real Madrid attack. Bro, I was thinking about oh this. My God, I don't want to see that. I don't want to <laughs> see it. No, I, I really don't, bro. Because they already have such a crazy... Yeah organic advantage by having Vinny Jr. Rodrigo, Rodrigo, man. Amazing scouting, amazing signings, incredible. But dude, it's already almost OP. When they're, when they're cooking like that, bro, it's incredible quality on the wings. Throwing in and bop into this, bro, they're gonna, I, th I think truly Real Madrid would dominate teams offensively to yeah. a level we never seen before, and it would just be too much, man. Dude, that's so It'd true. It'd be too much, man. You, you wouldn't even need a world-class midfield. You would just need guys who can play their role perfectly, and you just let the front three or maybe the front four just thrive, go off. Because that's almost what happened today, bro. Yeah. That is almost what happened. Fortunately, Diaz, Stones, and Akanji were able to kind of shore things up after 30, 40 minutes. But I, I truly do think that if they don't have Kyle Walker and Nathan Ake, I think it's going to be just as tough at Manchester City. They'll have home advantage, but if they have one of them, then I, I see City seeing this out for sure. Yeah. But I think it'll be 50-50 if they're both still injured. I think De Bruyne, De Bruyne also being back, I think is a big, big part of this mm -hmm. year. I think Kovac had stepped up in his place and that creativity, that that big game uh, energy that De Bruyne has, I think will be massive for a matchup like this too. Yeah. But let's keep looking at the comments here. Katie Brent says, we might be watching Man City winning the Champions League three pieces like Real Madrid did in 2015 to 2017. Getting ahead of yourself a little bit there. Let's focus on getting the second <laughs> one. But yes, that is true. Paul says, what are you saying? No world-class midfield. This guy's knowledge is so bad. Did you say no world-class midfield? I said they won't need one if you have Mbappe, Rodrigo, yeah. Bellingham, Vinicius yeah. all up top. Right now, honestly, Real Madrid have a really interesting midfield setup because 
I don't even know if I would consider it world class right now. It is even when you have Tony Kroos. Kamavinga is amazing, but he still has a lot to grow in what he has right now. But yeah, it was just more of a comment, not necessarily a definition no. of this Madrid side. Jonathan Dienga says Rodrigo Rodri still unbeaten. That's true, dude. He's gone a whole year not losing, and this game was hanging in the balance for him at one point. Oh he still God. continues not having lost in any match that he has started in, bro. That is truly, truly remarkable, man. Uh, guys, please remember to like the stream, comment, like the stream, subscribe, do everything you can to keep hyping it up so we can get the chat popping. Please, folks. Anthony McCarthy says, hot take, Camavinga and Valverde were mean of the match. Oh, man, 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 man of the, the match. match. Yeah, man yeah. of the match. I mean, that finish was ridiculous. The finish Valverde, was, we need to talk about that. For me, I think I already saw people saying what was the best goal in this match for me is Valverde. Yeah. Completely catches it perfectly. There was a decent amount of pace on the ball, too. Yeah. And he, dude, he rifles it in the bottom corner unstoppable i just love the way that he caught the ball man. yeah i think that for me best goal of the game yeah Valverde really good i'm gonna go with phil phonens so i'm gonna get biased <laughs> with it but technique wise you're right but yeah. was way more impressive and here's a comment here that i want to expand on leo florida saying holland didn't do anything which i completely agree man we had so many moments where uh ortega would blast the ball out in hopes that Holland would get to and he'd be facing up against uh, against uh, Rudiger and there's a lot of one-on-ones there constantly time and time again off of a goal kick and he got beat damn near every single time but it's not just that I was watching Holland in these games and there's been a narrative of him that in these big moments he doesn't truly show up the way he does against Sheffield United right. against a West Ham for example but in the big games you never really truly see it from Erling Holland and I'm just thinking about it bro like I, I know it's a, it's a bit of a superficial debate right now all things considered but uh, the comparison between him and Kylian Mbappe stood out to me because mm. even when Mbappe is at his absolute worst, <laughs> even if Barcelona finds a way to shut down Mbappe, he'll never be this unimpactful on the field like a, like Holland was today, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never. I don't yeah. think he'll even come close to it. And it's just a it's a it's a strong sign of just the limitations that Holland has when he isn't getting that service, when he isn't getting fed the ball the way that he wants to. He ends up kind of ghosting games, becoming a little bit invisible. And it's why I ultimately always go with Mbappe in that Holland Mbappe type debate. I know they're not the same type of players, but that debate is going to be lasting for the entire time that we do this podcast, bro. <laughs> and so I'm bringing it up now because this yeah. is why I always lean towards Mbappe, man, because at his worst, he is never as bad as what Holland is in these type of games yeah no i mean i completely agree but if you've watched manchester city over the last six months this season specifically holland not doing anything should not surprise you uh, i when i have manchester city being real madrid it is not because of erling holland it's because of phil foden your man and oh, he's boy. been phenomenal this year but then beyond that rodri bernardo silva and i already said it Kyle Walker and Nathan Ake are crucial to Manchester City defensive lineup. No. If they're not playing, Manchester City is very, very weak. Erling Holland's just there to occupy Rudiger, and he's going to do a great job at that. But to expect him to do more the way he's been playing this season, it ain't happening, bro. Holland is not in good form right now. He's, he's just playing there, right? and he's, yeah. he's doing his role. But, yeah, I, I don't expect much from Holland yeah, in these man. matches. Yeah, I mean, I just wish there would be more there, though. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, wish. yeah. yeah I for wish. sure, bro. Rodolfo Chavez, I would take Vardy over Holland. A <laughs> <laughs> hey, Vardy with this lineup would be fucking dope, bro. Jamie Vardy's prime was one of the most entertaining That's number true. Prime nine Vardy. players. Prime Vardy, bro. Prime Vardy would be fun. Oh, my God. Yes, we will talk about Bayern versus Arsenal in a second. We're just finishing up the discussion around Real Madrid and Manchester City. I'd better just start next leg. I think that's a bold. Uh, I think that's bold right there. I wouldn't do it personally. He hasn't been playing recently, no. and it's he's not going to play unless there's a major injury somewhere in the offensive lineup. Alvarez is on the bench. He's been on the bench the last two months. Yeah, Luis Escobar, Rudiger, so good, and nobody praises him as much. That is true. He, I he, he was amazing credit. today. Yeah, yeah. He was good. I, 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 yeah, that is true. We really yeah. didn't praise him, but he was fantastic. I honestly don't even think he actually got beat. He fouled Holland like what one time yep. over yep. the course of the ninety minutes. He pocketed Holland the entire game. Anthony McCarthy, I can't lie, all the goals in the games were bangers, not necessarily defensive mistakes. If you notice, almost all the shots were outside the box, and it was difficult for both teams to take shots in the box. That is true. Exactly. That is true. Exactly. To a many missing out on the next game because he picked up a yellow card. I think that's also something worth noting. That's big. Does Militao end up starting, having, considering that he hasn't played for a good amount of months? Uh, will it be like someone like Nacho? Who will it be? That's going to be really interesting to follow up with. But yes, overall, a really good match. And I want to do match ratings, which is what we did 
last year or a couple years ago when we did our World Cup live streams. I don't think we have the graphic for it, but regardless, guys, submit from a scale of one to 10 in terms of entertainment, in terms of quality, in terms of everything that encompasses a football match, what would you rate the Manchester City versus Real Madrid game? And then we'll transition over to Arsenal versus Bayern Munich. But first, Real Madrid, Manchester City, how would you rate that match on a scale of one to 10? Give me the numbers right now. What do you think? Oh, this one for me is like an 8.5. The goals were just absolutely ridiculous. Both teams were going completely at it. The passage of play with Vinicius and Rodrigo was so easy on the eye, man. Yeah, that nice. truly is the definition of like top class, UEFA yeah. football, quarter final, UEFA champion. Like, Damn, so it won't get a nine though? Uh, I mean, he, sure, not, but it's because it, no, no winner, a draw. Yeah, I, yeah. I need a winner. You're leaving man. that space open for, yeah. for you know a decisive winner. Yeah, exactly. Man, I'm gonna go nine. Okay. I'm gonna go nine because I just think this one, this is a this is a classic right here. What we just saw, a back and forth battle with so much quality. That's the thing. The goals beyond the deflected ones. The goals that we saw were such high quality. Yeah, it was some of the most beautiful things I've seen. And I've been wanting it so much because of the narrative behind both these teams going into this game. Very clearly, the biggest match for Manchester City and Real Madrid this entire season. And it actually lived up to the hype. And that's rare, man. That honesty is really rare. So for that reason, I give it a nine. Yeah. And it seems like the general consensus is pretty damn high. I'm seeing an eight. I'm seeing Anthony McCarthy once again with a 10. Ayu says 11. Jonathan Dienga, 10 out of 10. The fourth, 9.99 out of 10. What do you need for that? Extra point one, my friend. What is it? 9.99. <laughs> Our boy uh, Asher Collins, nine out of ten game, missed some superstars, but bangers everywhere. Angel says this was cinema. I agree, man. Like it really gave me that same feeling of watching a masterful movie. Hey, shout out Luis Mello for the two dollars. Thank you, bro. Happy to see you Thank again. You, Luis. One of our faithful followers here at the Give and Go. Shout out my boy Luis. Man City will win since last time Madrid tied Manchester City. They lost 4-0, in my opinion. That is what happened at the end of the last time around. So ultimately, your prediction for what's going to happen in the second leg yeah i think manchester city will win they're gonna hopefully need either kyle walker or nathan ake healthy for them to like completely shore it up it's still possible without them i'm curious to see if de bruyne is gonna play but he also just kind of, you know coming off of an injury over the last couple months so he's been kind of weird he's not getting he's not used to like over 60 minutes of football yeah. so how that gonna impact manchester city uh, again I i'm serious the conclusion is Madrid have a really good chance to beat this Manchester City side, but I think City will still edge them. Mm. That's how, that, that's how I see the second yeah, leg. I'm going It'll City. Be, yeah, I'm going City, man. I, and I think we'll see once again those City fans jumping with their <laughs> with their backs facing the fucking pitch, jumping and creating the another iconic moment for them. It'll be huge, but I agree, it's going to be a banker of a matchup, and I already can't wait, bro. I, I feel like I was left on a cliffhanger. Yes, from that, what what we just saw, man. Right, exactly. All right, guys, we're going to transition over to Arsenal versus Bayern Munich, the second match that happened today. Real quickly, man, what the fuck is UEFA thinking? Scheduling these games at the same time. Please, so for the love of God, stack these matches. Please. On Hit Bautista, $2. Thank you, my friend. Arsenal celebrate a draw versus fanless Bayern. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Thank you for the donation once again. But yes, we saw a 2 2 draw at the Emirates Stadium with Arsenal coming into one of the most. Hyped up games for them in their history, given what's happened in the past 10 years, bro. I mean, this Arsenal side is currently leading the Premier League, and they're now in a quarterfinal matchup against a historic Bayern Munich side that is struggling, bro. Struggling in the Bundesliga. And the game starts off with a beautiful, a wondrous Bukayo Saka finish. World class. Dude, it was the classic Arsenal style of goal where they just do little ticky mm -hmm. tack, little one twos on the wing, and obviously utilize the class of their wingers. This time, it was Bukayo Saka who gets the ball, dribbles a little penetration on the right hand side, curls it around the keeper. 1 0 Arsenal, man. 1 0, man. What a goal. Apologies for what just happened. Some crazy technical difficulty. Producer Rudd just punched Saltero off screen, and we had a crazy <laughs> back and forth. Yeah, man. It was they a were quick little scuffle. They're, they're little eating, yeah, Producer Rudd doesn't think Bukayo Saka's world class, and that that really triggered. <laughs> it really triggered him. He started throwing punches at him. It was a crazy scene. We are back. Jesus Christ. Sorry Arsenal <laughs> was up 1 0. Yes. And the point I was about to make is that I noticed that the game was very nervy, man. Nervy because I think this stage was very big for Arsenal. And we saw last year how big stages could maybe get to Arsenal's mentality and can affect their performances. And so I wasn't surprised to see that it ultimately was a nervy mistake that caused Bayern scoring that first goal off of a really disappointing, I believe it was Gabriel mistake, where he tried to hand the ball off over to Kivyar. He couldn't get to it. Pass was too far off from him. Gets picked up. Beautiful pass in. I don't know from who, but at the end of it, 
I believe it was Serge Gnabry. Yeah. Serge Gnabry ties it with a beautiful counterattacking goal from Bayern Munich to make it 1-1. But once again, that nerviness stood out to me, man. Yeah, I know. And just to make sure, I didn't watch this game at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I only watched the Madrid, uh, Madrid's Manchester City game. So I don't really have much to say here. Yeah, no, fair enough. And yeah. then what followed was Leroy Sané absolutely spinning and cooking Kivyar on the sidelines, bro. What he did to him was in incredible, that, yeah. bro. What an insane spin to create space. And once he had that space, he just penetrates and he goes all the way into Arsenal's box until once again, another Arsenal center back making a, a really cheap mistake. This time, Saliba drawing the penalty. Harry Kane steps up, London's finest, <laughs> and he scores are going to make it 2-1. Yeah, I saw that go. What a run from Leroy mm -hmm. Sané. Mm -hmm. It was actually kind of like flashbacks of his time when he was actually in the Premier League, just ripping defenses. Yeah. He does it in the biggest stage here, the UEFA Champions League, man. But, dude, what, what a run from yeah. Sané. My goodness. And, and I will say, I, th I think Bayern really needed those goals, bro, because second half Bayern, to me, was much different than what we saw in the first half. Arsenal really shored themselves up, and it was clear that Bayern was just playing to take advantage of the mistakes that Arsenal made. Yeah. And if they weren't making any, then there wasn't really any like opportunities generated for Bayern. And we saw in that second half, bro, because Arsenal started playing a lot more confidently. The the nerves went away, and we saw them start to, you know, play their classic Arsenal style of football, leading up to something that you've mentioned in the past, Arsenal being capable of some of the sexiest football oh, in yeah. world football right now. Gabriel Jesus turning me on, bro, with <laughs> a beautiful fucking pass yeah. to Trossard to finish it and get it, tie the game up 2-2 insane handles on the ball in the tightest of spaces he somehow has the vision at the same time to find an incoming Lando Trossard on the lateral pass and he does mm -hmm. perfectly mm -hmm. and Trossard has been so clinical since he has joined Arsenal and he's continued that fashion with a brilliant strike Arsenal 2-2 but seeing that goal Again, yeah, solidified the sexiness that the Arsenal sexy, have going bro. forward. But I was so proud of Arsenal in that moment because the both goals that they managed to get against Bayern Munich is what Arsenal is all about. Yes. Tight control in tight spaces, little one-twos. It's what Arteta has preached for the last three years at Arsenal, and it's what they're executing at the highest level. So for Arsenal to do it here against you know the great Bayern Munich, I think showed that they were able to get past that, those nerves in the first 20, 30 minutes, and I was so proud of them in that yes. moment, man. And so what follows is a really important question. It'll be the first poll that we do regarding this game. Producer Rudd, I want the title to be, was it a penalty? And the poll options to be yes or no. Was it a penalty? Yes or no? Because folks will already know what I'm talking about. Last few minutes of the match. Tricky. Bukayo Saka is at the top of the box. He's going in. He's solo. He touches the ball out. Noor catches him, perhaps? And Saka falls down, bringing up a really controversial situation of was it a penalty or not. You look at the replay. And personally, to me, it looked like Saka stretched his foot out to get the draw, to to fall on the ground and get the you know draw the foul. It did, and then to double down on that, I didn't really see Neuer stretch out a leg or stretch mm -hmm. out an arm to really stop him. He put his body there, so there's obviously that obstruction. But he's a goalkeeper; that's his job. I'm kind of okay with a no call here. But I, the thing is, you played enough times, you show me a certain angle. Maybe a penalty would be the right decision. It's definitely iffy, but I'm cool with the no call. I would say no, but I agree with what Hus Jaber says here. But why not review the VAR? Why not go review it and just make sure that you're making the right call in a situation this high stakes? That's my only That's my only remark. Let's look at the poll right now. We have results that are saying 52% no, 48% yes. I mean, it's pretty even. It's pretty even, It's yeah. pretty even, man. It really is. Here's five dollars to help Saltero's medical bills after producer Run touched him. <laughs> bro, thank you, hey, man. Hey, bro, he needs thank that you. shit, bro. He needs that <laughs> shit, man. Big time. Thank you, my boy Luis Melo, man. Thank you. I agree. Why no var? That's my biggest thing. But regardless, yeah. the result ends two two, and now Arsenal has to go to the Allianz Arena to hopefully get a result there to win this matchup. Here's what I'm thinking after having seen this game, man. Here's what I'm thinking. I think that Arsenal's often showed up the way that we hoped they would, and that's a really big positive. Defensively, it's concerning because of the two big mistakes that Gabriel and Saliba, your two stalwarts in the back, made in such a big situation. The best defense, I believe, in the Premier League right now in terms yeah. of goals conceded. A lot was expected out of them, and they didn't come through. Thing is, they're so good. The quality is so high for them. 
I don't see them making mistakes once again in back-to-back matches, man. I think they're going to shore up the defense. I think they're going to get their options correct. They're going to get their readings right. And that Arsenal offense will come into play the way it consistently does. And we'll actually see Arsenal pull off an incredible result at the Allianz Arena against Bayern Munich. Because this Bayern Munich side, I just, I, it really takes so much for them to generate good opportunities. It took Leroy Sonny with a moment of brilliance, a moment of genius to get past Jacob Kivyar and then draw a penalty. And beyond that, it was a Gabriel mistake and a Saliba mistake that caused those two goals. So I, I think there's a lot more that Arsenal can take advantage of and create versus Bayern Munich. And although the atmosphere will be very, very intense, yeah. I'm hoping, and I do think they'll step up. Yeah, I, I do think so too. I think going to the Allianz Arena will be like taking a sip out of a glass of whiskey. At first, the taste <laughs> is going to be a little harsh, but once your tongue gets acclimated to the taste, it's going to be a you know piece of cake for Arsenal. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I, I do see them performing at a very high level at, in Germany. I'm not worried about that. Thing is, I think a lot of people... Think of this Arsenal team as the Arsenal 10 years ago that was very good, could reach very high highs, but had clear holes within their entire starting 11. This team is not on just a magical run. This Arsenal team is fully realized. They have been fighting for the Premier League title for two straight years now. I see this Arsenal team as just a team that knows itself very well, that can figure games out within the 90 minutes, and they're better than Bayern, bro. Yeah. So I think they're going to be okay when they go to Germany. I have Arsenal still winning this time. And that's our next poll. Producer, what if you could get ready for me? He was winding up for another punch on Saltero. We're going to do who wins the next matchup. Will it be Bayern Munich or Arsenal? Bayern Munich or Arsenal? I want to hear y'all's votes. What do you think? Vanquisher Z says, really? I respect your opinion, but I think that Bayern is the happier team considering it's the Islands Arena. Absolutely. Uh, going back home is such a huge advantage for oh, the second true. leg, especially if you get the draw on the road. I just think Arsenal's that good. That's mm -hmm. my thing. I'm putting a lot of praise on Arsenal because I think they can go into Bayern Munich and beat them, especially considering that Bayern is just weird this year, man. Yep. They're not as good as they usually are. Arsenal's the better team, and I think it'll show no matter where they play. Guys, vote. I want to know. Mateo Pegasus says, $2 donation. Thank you, my friend. I love that, that name, Mateo. Arsenal had to kill them by two goals to win. They have to kill them by two goals to win? Is Maybe that's what he meant? Or Means maybe he's saying like they had to win today by two by goals, two goals to, to win. win the whole tie. Damn, this, this comment can mean a lot of things. <laughs> 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 I do that. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I could see that, too. I could see that, too. I mean, the thing, the, the thing is that is scary about Bayern is that what we criticized was their consistency right, yeah. throughout a whole season, and that's shown to be very disappointing. But they are capable of playing a really high level of football in one-off games. And so that is what, kind of what we saw today. When they were up 2-1 at halftime, I was like, okay, Bayern showed up, and that is what they're capable of. So I'm not trying to disregard them, but no. I agree. Prior to both these games happening, we went with Manchester City and Arsenal for the reasons that we mentioned. One of the reasons for Arsenal was that they just play a higher level of football more consistently. And so yeah. for that reason, I'm going to go with them winning the second leg. But I agree. Hus Jaber says, horrible take. Saltero got a concussion from producer Rudd. <laughs> We'll find, we'll find out next week. We'll find out, man. We'll find out, man. We'll find out. Luis Escobar, Bayern have been in these moments before, and they are so good, so good, while Arsenal is just experiencing a top stage for the first time in ages, and it will show. The experience factors, what people are predicting, will it, come it, into it's, play. It's a great point, and it's something you do have to take into account, but I think the way that they manage this game proved to me that they can manage next week's as well. Yeah. Hot dog. Love that username. Here's the thing with Bayern this season. In the Bundesliga, they have been poor. Bayern in the Champions League hasn't been bad. Bayern tied Arsenal away. Bayern has the advantage. We got a lot of Bayern fans in here, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of Bayern yeah, fans, yeah. and I like it. I like it. C-Paps, if Bayern get through, the winner of Real versus City is definitely getting to the final. Surely. I yeah, agree. I, agree I agree with that. hundred percent. I agree. Angel says it's going to be a lot of weight, especially on Tuchel and his position on the job. Bayern will probably part ways immediately if they don't contend. I mean, bro, if he doesn't get a result here, that that, that has to be it for Tuchel. What else is it going to take? Uh, honestly, I mean, what the else? league's already done. The only thing they have going for them is the Champions League. If they're out of that by next week, why not just get a new manager in and or at least an interim mm -hmm. to just calm everybody down before the off season? Yeah. Let's look at the poll results. We have who wins the next matchup between Bayern Munich and Arsenal. 60 votes and 61% going Bayern Munich with Arsenal at 38%. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let's hear it, folks. Let's see it. We'll be back next time fair for enough. another stream after that game. 
to talk about who ends up winning that matchup. And then, you know, let's see who got who gets it. Carlos Garcia says, weird take, but Tuchel is a big tournament manager. I think Bayern can still win the UCL regardless of their season. Plus, Tuchel won this tourney with the Chelsea team on a similar state as his Bayern side. That, that is actually a great point. Tuchel has been really good in very big moments. And again, I think it showed today. I mean, there was even a point where Leroy Sané broke the defense. Could have gone up 3-1 at the time. 3-1, unfortunately, got a little sloppy with his dribbles. So, Bayern, as we already said, do have world-class players that can hurt any defense. doesn't matter how good you're doing in the Premier League. But... I, I just think overall, Tuchel's had such a really strenuous season. Bayern are just, as we already said, inconsistent. Arsenal are flying high. I still think Arsenal will win. Yeah. I, I really do. Roger Rivera says, if Real Madrid win, I want a five-page apology letter from Reynoso the Reindeer. Now, I want to know, Roger, what in your life did I do to you, bro? What did I do to you? Because I told Bar I told Borussia Dortmund fans I would write a five-page letter because I've spoken badly about that team this entire season, and I've doubted them at every single turn, and they've proved me wrong. So I'll happily write a five-page letter, apology letter for Borussia Dortmund fans, but for Real Madrid... When the, what do I what what do I have? What is there for me to gain? Hey, then? Easy, what, easy, what, easy, what, easy, easy. Sorry, bro. I'm, a little, I'm so surprised, bro. That came out of nowhere, man. That came out of nowhere, guys. Fucking calm down, man. I ain't running no apology letter for how much it wins. No, bro. That you should actually because you're a bigger Manchester City fan than I am. No, that's the thing, though. I mean, if you if you listen to what I was saying, Madrid have. I, I, I might even give them like a 51% chance of winning. Yeah. Like it's very tight. I'm not even going against Madrid. I think they're a fantastic team. I just think City will edge them. That's it. Guys, please give me the match rating 1 to 10 between this Arsenal versus Bayern Munich side. From the consensus that I just saw, it looked like people rated Real Madrid, Manchester City like a 9.2 on average, 9.3. It was pretty high something, but 9s and 10s and a few 8s. 1 to 10, what would you rate this Arsenal, Bayern Munich side in terms of quality, in terms of entertainment, atmosphere, and all the things that encompasses a good football match? 1 to 10. Saltero, what you got? Out of from what I saw, what you a saw. couple passes of plays, a couple goals. <laughs> Honestly, it's got to at least be an eight. Okay, so seven point yeah. eight, maybe seven point yeah. seven, something like that. I gave the Real Madrid City game a nine out of ten. I'll go eight point five on this one. Mm. I think this was just slightly lesser because I mean four goals overall versus six in the Real Madrid Manchester <laughs> City match. Mateo Pegasus. $10. Hey, thank you, bro. Thank we can feed Mateo. producer Rudd finally, bro. We'll get him some McDonald's after this so he can eat calmly. Nagelsmann would have taken this team to new heights. It was the wrong move to get Tuchel. He joined. We lost the UCL. Got knocked out the, the DFB Pokal and barely won the Bundesliga last year. Oh, yeah. I, I remember when Tuchel got the appointment to Bayern. One of the first things we said was Bayern are acting in very non-Bayern ways. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I completely agree. Nagelsmann should have had way longer especially considering what he had done prior to joining Bayern Munich he deserved way more time Tuchel I get it he's German he was successful with Dortmund he was successful with Chelsea I get it but yeah I, I agree Nagelsmann uh, seeing wonder, Nagelsmann there man, longer would have been cool I wonder what he would have been able to do now that we've seen what Tuchel has done this whole season yeah. I mean it's been really disappointing I, I think he could have done better than yeah it, it reminds me of like Manchester United when Sir Alex Ferguson left and they just they thought it was the manager the pro that was the problem but in reality it was actually the players it's kind of similar here there's just a couple of pieces in the Bayern Munich team that doesn't seem like it fits really well yeah. and it's not the manager's fault it really is just the team that is at his disposal yeah really good take there really good take guys Please, we just rated the game. Nice, I'm seeing a lot of eights, 7.5. I'm seeing a nine. I love it. Sarwan says, Soltero should write an apology letter just for being an Atleti fan. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Damn, bro. They're coming, yeah, that's hard. They're coming for us in the fucking chat today, man. I don't know what it is. It's got to be the eclipse, bro. <laughs> There's some weird energy in the air right now, man. Good Lord, man. The chat is really against us today. I'll never apologize if I let the, nah, you the, the, the main subject. I'll never. And, never. That, and that, that helps me transition into the last category I want to get into regarding this stream. I don't know let's, what's going to happen Let's tomorrow. preview. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, man. I'm, I'm, I said it in the preview. I'm yeah, scared yeah. of Dortmund. Yeah. As any Atletico fan should be. If, if an Atletico fan is not scared of Dortmund, they are truly no. delusional. And I'll be I'll be cheering every single kick that Atleti takes tomorrow. But I'm, I'm very scared of Dortmund. You nervous? I'm nervous, man. I'm very nervous. Anything could happen here. I truly could yeah. see Dortmund winning. I could see a draw. I could see Atletico winning. This is honestly probably the most even match out of the quarterfinals. Let's make a poll. Atletico Madrid versus Dortmund. I want to know what you guys think uh, will happen. Atletico Madrid producer run. There you go. Madrid, yeah. then Dortmund. 
please. Uh, <laughs> the, the, so I'm pretty sure I don't really know football. So these names are crazy to spell. Uh, Dortmund, uh, Dortmund, uh, M U N M U. Yeah. There you go. And then uh, and then add another option of draw because they could die. Okay. Yeah. And then you can just submit that. Just yeah, yeah there you go. We're sorry. We're, we're we're working on this. We're working on this. <laughs> the poll is coming. I mean, I'm excited, bro. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Is, is this at home for you guys? I don't even it's know. It's at the Wanda. I, I, I think the first one's I, I at the Wanda. I think it is, but I just, it's going to be really tough, man. Yeah. But there's always potential for something crazy to happen. We just need to win our physical duels in the midfield, get Griezmann on the ball. Hopefully he's going to be 100% fit. I'm still don't, not even sure. But if we can do that, we'll give ourselves the best chance to win. If we don't win our physical duels, Dorman win the midfield. And if they do that, then they start finding Daniel Malin. They start finding Jaden Sancho, right? And that's where Atletico is going to have a lot of problems because we do not have an actually good defense, right? Yeah, it's no, our no, midfield no. defense that is very, very good. If that gets beat, we concede one, two goals. And then at that point, Griezmann's not getting on the ball anymore. And yeah, Atletico lose. That's And yeah. the, either, either way I could see happening. So I'm just curious to see who actually steps up. Atletico has to win. They, they have, have to. They have to get a they, result. They ha we have to get a result yeah. if it's at home. We have to. Yeah, it's not like Arsenal or Manchester City. No, where they no, get no, a tie no. They'll be fine in the second leg. Uh, Atletico needs to get a result. And it seems like in the couple of years that we've had this podcast, you built yourself a little bit of an Atleti army because we do have some Atletico fans here in the comments. Right, good, Ketchup, good. eggs, and bean, and tomato sauce has been commenting this whole chat. I've been seeing you, brother. And he's got the Atleti badge as his uh, yeah, as his profile picture, ketchup. man. Daniel Lizarraga says Atletico all the way with all a the heart way, emoji, baby. man. I mean, you it, Yash says, I trust Simeone. Cholo Simeone will take a lead at Metropolitana, a play haram ball in classic Atleti fashion at Signal Iduna Park. That's what it'll take. Yeah. And if we pull that off, we win 100%. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, Dorman are pretty good on the ball yeah, if they yeah, get on yeah, it. Yeah. No, we're, we're not going to downplay Dorman, man, because like <laughs> I said, I've been harping on this whole season and they proved me wrong time and time again. Poll results, we have Atletico Madrid winning at 59%. Dortmund at 19 and a draw at 22. You think these are good results, my friend? Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah? A hundred percent take. 60% yeah. win? I'll take yeah. that, bro. Yeah. El Cholissimo will prevail. Let's move over to the next match, guys. Next match to preview is Barcelona versus PSG. This is going to be a fun one. This, this is going to be, gonna really be a fun one. And yeah. could you actually start previewing? Because I want to see where the game is going to be held at in the meantime. Yeah. I mean, in our preview that we said... I. The first thing that comes yeah, to mind is princess. Kylian Mbappe being the difference. Yeah. And for as good as Barcelona have been the last month and a half, because they're playing their best football, I still think prime, top-flying Kylian Mbappe can beat anybody. It'll take a full team. I'm talking about a Madrid, a Manchester City, an Arsenal to be able to handle Mbappe and then yeah. also beat PSG, right? Yeah, yeah. You have to do both. You have to be able to handle Mbappe and then take care of PSG and beat them. But the thing is, I just don't know if Barcelona have it. I, I just don't know if they have the full squad at their disposal. I don't think De Jong's going to be fully fit mm -hmm. for this match. I'm mm -hmm. not 100% sure there. Gubarsi is going to be fine. I'm not worried about Barcelona's defense. It really is that midfield. Also, Pedri, is he going to be fully fit mm -hmm. or not? I just think those absences are really going to hurt Barcelona, whereas PSG have their full 11, and of course, Mbappe's a part of that. I agree with this point of, of Mbappe, man. He's, you're talking about him like he's John Wick, dude. Like good, <laughs> like the things that are going to take to, to take it takes him out. A lot. It, it takes, takes a lot. lot. But I will say we made our quarterfinal preview and predictions like a month ago. And a lot, a lot has transpired in that time. Dude, the energy of these Barcelona fans for this past month has been slowly brewing yeah. to a point where I'm like, they might be able to pull off a result here, man. Oh, they they might. And like, they actually have a really good shot of qualifying out of the quarterfinals to go to the semifinals because, I mean, the chances are there. The hopes are there. The title run is in place now. They have to face off against either Atleti or Dorman in the semifinals. Barca has a really good shot of making the finals if they beat this PSG side. Oh, yeah. And so, man, like, I'm in a really tough place of wanting to root for Mbappe and the class that he provides, but then also seeing, you know, recognizing that this Barcelona team is looking really good going into this matchup, man. Regardless of the injuries, the energy is really, really positive. Roger Rivera with a $5 super chat. Thank you, my friend. We're good now. I know you went at me earlier with that five apology letter thing, whatever. Thank you, my friend. He says, gonna watch Ethan Mbappe's brother. 
<laughs> Let's go. We got Ethan Mbappe's brother is wild, bro. That's why low key. I want to put out that energy out there, bro, because that, that's 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 negative, man. I don't know if any defender has done that <laughs> successfully for ninety minutes. Yeah, for ninety minutes. I don't know if anyone's actually done that. Gonna watch Ethan Mbappe's brother get pocketed by Araujo tomorrow, and then I'm gonna watch Dembele play like he did in the World Cup final. Fucking Visca Barça, bro. <laughs> I mean, that's the energy I'm that's talking energy, about, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the energy I'm talking about. Let's keep looking at these comments. PSG basically last good chance to get their first Champions League, says Katie Bren. I mean, yeah, this wow, is a really yeah. good chance no, for them. Yeah. This is a really good chance for them for them to uh, take advantage of. Me, M says PSG have bad defense. My edit says City at home can defeat Madrid. My fault. I didn't read that beforehand. CPAPs. Mbappe is overrated. He has to prove it consistently in a top league first. I mean, I disagree with that. I, I think at this point, we've seen what he's done in the World Cup. We see, yes, it's Ligue 1, but he has dominated the way that is expected of him. Man, I love Mbappe, bro. I don't want to hear any Mbappe hate whatsoever. Roger Rivera, Joao Felix is going to shit on PSG, and then he's going to shit on Atletico in the semifinals. Roger Rivera is coming out for smoke, dude. For fucking smoke. Noah, Haru, Noah how would I do says, y'all think Messi's going to watch? <laughs> it's a PSG, <laughs> and it, it's funny. <laughs> it's That's PSG. crazy. Yeah. I wonder, man. I wonder. <laughs> that, that was seeing bro. Messi just like, oh, I gotta watch the PSG Barca game. I guess I have as to. a as a fan. I guess I have to. Yeah, I That's did. I did crazy. play at both these clubs. Yeah, yeah. Fati, when is Gimigo making a TV channel? Y'all are more entertaining and knowledgeable than boring ass Sky, ESPN, and through the end. And my boy, thank you, man. Pre- thank you really appreciate. We just that, gotta get, we gotta get a PC strong enough, man, because our stream fucking went out, bro. That's that's where they have an advantage on, on us, man. They got great equipment, but we'll we'll get there one day. Oh no, we're gonna get there. I would say this year, just in general, look out for way more content, guys. Live mm-hmm. streams as well. So mm-hmm. we're, we're we're gonna get pretty close to having yeah. a what you could consider a TV yeah, channel. Bro. Our first live stream in over a year, guys. Yeah. I mean, should we finish off with the poll? Barca versus PSG, just so I know where people stand on this uh, on this debate between who's going to win tomorrow. Bar- Barca, PSG, and then a tie, please, producer Rudd. Let me know who you guys think will win this matchup. Barcelona fans must be feeling nervy. Must be feeling nervy, bro. It's going to be a big day for Spanish football with Real Madrid tying against Manchester City and Arsenal against Bayern Munich. These next two matches are going to be incredible. Once again, I'm pissed off that they're scheduled at the same time, but we'll make ends <laughs> know, meet. And we won't be back tomorrow for a... Uh, no, we will. We will. Yeah, we live will. We, it'll be live stream tomorrow. Oh shit! Same okay. time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Shit. We'll, we'll talk. We'll talk off screen about what that. Yeah, yeah. Right, we have different plans. We bro. have different plans. No, we're, we're doing live stream, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> bet, bro. Bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please let's finish up this uh, poll so we can close this episode out. But tomorrow is going to be a banger match. You'll see the instant reaction from Saltero and his beautiful <laughs> athletic side, man. If they pull off a victory, you're going to be uh, buzzing like no other, man. And I will too because I'm, I'm trying to avoid that five page letter, dude. So we're both on the same page. <laughs> okay, okay. We're both on the same page. And for Barca. PSG, I mean, I'm excited to see that. Too, I'm bro. so excited. I'm excited. I, have, I have nothing in that game. I just want to be entertained. Yes, exactly. And I'm so excited because exactly. there's true quality on both sides. Yeah. Poll results are in 69% to Barcelona, 24% to PSG, 7% for a draw. God damn. I don't think it's that 70%? close. 70%? I don't think it's that close. And the game's in at PSG. It's at, it's at Parque de Princes. So yeah. I don't think it's going to be that simple, man. But regardless, if Barcelona wins, I mean, they'll end up being right, dude. It yeah. really, they really oh, will. Yeah. We'll read the last few comments here before we go out. Leo says, "We will y'all be live after the Europa League games? I don't think so. I don't think so. We're going to start uh, getting into Europa League probably at the semifinal stage, if we're being honest. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Daniel Lizarraga says, Reynoso, did you celebrate Chicharito's goal? I did. I, I did. I did. I it, it, it. it was a pretty goal. It. it was a beautiful moment, man, yeah. seeing him celebrate in front of all the friends, fans at the Akron, man. It made me happy to f- for him to finally get that first goal with Chivas, man. It made me really happy. Catch up, too much, too much Barca fans. I agree. Catch up. It's at the Parque de Princes. 2-1 Barca. Uh, CPAPs, great live stream, guys. Maybe bring in some guests. I mean, we'll definitely, once we get the ball rolling back on our live streams, right, Copa right. America's right around the corner. Mm-hmm. CONCACAF mm-hmm. Champions Cup tonight. That's also a big one. That's with true. Th- Messi's not going to be watching the game. He's going to be traveling to Monterrey. Yeah, bro, he's <laughs> been crossing the border and shit, man. <laughs> Getting back home, man. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. I'm actually really looking forward to yeah. that one. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for joining this live. Really happy to see you all once again, whether it was positive vibe, negative vibes, I don't care. Thank you guys for watching and sticking with us, even though we had some crazy Crazy complica- complications halfway through. Yeah. A great live stream, and I'm excited to do this once again tomorrow. We will see you guys very, very soon. And I'll paletti. I'll paletti, baby. Let's go. Let's Come go. on. Let's go. Till next time, guys. Peace. Peace. Peace.